morning to everyone. A few announcements this morning. Let's remember the Kendleton Church of God Pastor and Wife Appreciation, which will be held today at 3 p.m. in Kendleton, Texas, 619 FM 2919 for Pastor Kenneth Meeks and First Lady Meeks. The New Hope Baptist Church will have a Fall Fun Fest um, October the 30th, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, Spindle Tap, 10622 Hirsch Road here in Houston, Texas. The events include trunk or treating, interactive games, live music, um, egg hunt, free giveaways, hot dogs for the kids, food trucks, vendors, and more for ages 12 and under, uh, there will be an additional, uh, there will be an additional cost, I believe. Another uh, church, a Dunamis Revival Fire Conference from the Dunamis uh, Revival uh, church. It will be held at 9702 Devereux Drive in Sugar Land, Texas. Um, they have an email address here if you'd like to uh, email them for more information. It says there is, it is free entrance, but pre-registration is required. On the website, it's, um, the phone number is 346-350-9591. It will be held at the Hilton Houston North, 12400 Greens Point Drive here in Houston, Texas. The Kitchen Committee is asking the women of the CWC and the men of the MCG for their donations to fund the Thanksgiving and Christmas baskets. This year, they are asking for two separate donations of $20 for each holiday. Your deadline for giving um, for, uh, will be November the 6th for the Thanksgiving donations and Christmas deadline for the donations will be December 4th. Please submit names of individuals who may be in need so that um, we can support them. Kitchen Committee thanks you for your continued support for this project and the committee members are Sister Jean Robinson, Sister Janice Wilson, and Sister Joyce Alexander. Let's remember our Wednesday night Zoom Bible study at 7.30 p.m. If you're not joined, we'll be glad to help you to get started. Lessons for the Bible study are all located on the back table in the fellowship hall. We'd like to thank Sister, uh, Minister Angel Williams and Minister Dessa Lewis for continuing to bless us with the lessons. If you need the meeting ID number, it is 708-973-6479 and the passcode is VISION. Let's also remember our Sunday School lessons, which are located on our YouTube channel. It's called Shady Dale Church, all in one. Thanks to Brother Nehemiah Newman and Brother Calvin Williams for their continued dedication to present the lesson. If all hearts are clear, please govern yourselves accordingly. Thank you. Thanks for taking those announcements today. And thank God for thank God for each one who's present today. We do honor and praise to God for all of his goodness. Thank God for each one of you who's present. Uh, we welcome the Facebook Live here. We welcome the Facebook Live and the ones that have always join. We thank you for your continued support to to view the broadcast and we know that your life is better. Thank you for uh, hanging those announcements as well. All of you are present today. Continue to pray for Shady Dale and the Vision. Thank you for those of you who came to the meeting on yesterday for the support of that as well. Continue to pray for the Vision here at Shady Dale. God bless us. Show us great favor in all the processes that we're going through. And we know that God is is faithful and true. And, uh, 
he will do what he promised and uh, just going to continue to be prayerful for us here at Shady Dale. Uh, that God will continue to fulfill the destiny and the purpose he has for us. Amen. I continue to pray for the church family, uh, those that we see here today and, and those that are not here. God will bless them. And, and um, we just thank you, God, for those who are here today. We haven't seen in a while. Thank God for Sister Alexander being in the midst. And uh, we're just thanking God for all of his goodness. Amen. And God has been good to us. And we just thank him and praise him for each and every blessing. So we give God all praise. At this time, praise Him will come with our last song. God will look in the word.
suffered this morning is the good news experience. Jesus wants you to understand. Jesus wants you to understand. We've been sharing from this theme, the good news experience. We reflect on uh, the news media and how they often begin the broadcast with bad news. And that bad news, they say, captures our attention and draws us in to to help to hold our attention and to capture our, our, our ability to, to want to watch the news. But I want to say today that God wants us to remember that there is good news in the world. Good news is in the world today, and you and I need to be those people who will share that good news. And, and the psalmist says in Psalm number 40, verse 5, Many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done. And your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be known. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Burn offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, Behold, I come and the scroll of the book is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God, and your law within my heart. I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness in the great assembly. Indeed, I do not restrain my lips. O Lord, you yourself know. So the challenge of us as believers is to share the good news, to let the world know that good things are happening in, in, in life. And if it can happen in my life, it can happen in your life. And so, as we've said, uh, if you begin to count the good things that God has done, there are more that can be numbered. So you and I need to begin to share something that God has done, to tell the good news about how he has saved you and how he blessed you and how he kept you. The fact that we're sitting here today is a testimony that God has been good to us. Especially in the light of the pandemic we've been living through, God has blessed us and shown us favor to allow us just to be alive and well. Amen? So God has shown us favor. So that's the, that's the good news experience that you and I ought to be able to share with the world, with our friends and family, to let them know that yes, God is still doing great things. He has done great things for me. So I want to be those, those proclaimers of the good news of the gospel today. Our New Testament text comes from the gospel of Mark. Mark's gospel is written that we might believe and understand and see Jesus Christ's life of service and sacrifice. Because Jesus, he didn't have to do what he did. He didn't have to give up his life for you and I. But he came, as the, as the psalmist says, behold, I come in the volume of the book. To do your will, oh my God. So Jesus came to, to give a life of service and sacrifice. He came to give up himself so that others can be blessed. And so you and I need to realize that, that that's part of what his example was for you and I to, to make sure that we give a life of service and sacrifice. No, we don't have to die on the cross like Jesus did. We want to use our time and our talent and our treasure and our abilities to make a difference in the world. Amen. I heard it said many times that the, the, the place where most of the gifts are in the world are in the cemetery because people took their gifts and their talents with them into the cemetery. They didn't use them in the world. And one of the things that I remember growing up, the, the, the parable of the talents, he gave one five, he gave one two, and he gave one one. The one who had five, he, God blessed him and doubled his talent and, and, and told him, you know, you are blessed and highly favored. The woman, two did the same thing. His two became four, and he was blessed and highly favored. But the one who had the one talent said, well, you know, I buried my talent. And now, you know, now that you're back, I'm going to give it right back to you. Here it is. You know, he dusted it off and gave it to him. And, and the Lord was like, you wicked and slow for serving. You didn't serve. You didn't, you didn't put your talent into use. You could have at least put it in the bank and made some interest off of it. Yeah. But he didn't use his talent. And so I want to challenge us to make sure we use our life in service and sacrifice to the kingdom of God. Amen. So Mark's gospel today in our text in Mark chapter four, we see a parable, uh, a familiar parable. The story is a parable of the, the mustard seed. How the mustard seed is considered one of the smallest of seeds. <laughs> and sometimes in our lives, we might feel like we're one of the smallest of people. We allow all these uh, negative thoughts in our own mind, our own perception about ourselves to say, well, we really can't accomplish much. But I want to see in the text today that God wants you to understand his kingdom. He wants you to see and understand the plan and the purpose he has for your life and mine. If he can use 
the smallest seed, the mustard seed, surely he can use you and me. Sometimes when we hear stories about great people in life, you know, President, you know, Martin Luther King Jr., you name all the historians, whatever, we might feel like they were greater than you and I. But the reality is that we were all born of a woman, right? Born in sin and shaking iniquity, but, but we just, those people decided to use their gifts and their talents. All of them couldn't sing. All of them couldn't preach and pray or whatever they were. They went on, on, uh, on Motown or on the radio, or all those things, but they used their gifts and talents in the body of Christ, in the kingdom of God, and in the world. And if God can use them, surely he can use you and me. But it comes with us understanding the kingdom of God and his purpose and his plan for our life. And in this text today, there are three things I want us to see. We can understand that Jesus wants us to understand, to understand his kingdom, to understand his plan and purpose for our lives, and to put ourselves in place so that we can receive the blessings of the kingdom of God. The first thing I want to say in this text today is that Jesus wants us to see the kingdom. <laughs> Jesus wants us to see the kingdom. Look at the text. Mark chapter 4, verse 30 says, Then he said, To what shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what parable shall we picture it? So a picture is something you can see, right? You know, a picture, sometimes if we don't have a, a, a visual picture, we want to paint a word picture. And it's nothing like, some of you are old enough to remember when you could listen to games on the radio. <laughs> I remember growing up uh, in South Carolina, we didn't have cable back in the 80s and 70s. That me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> but I could listen at nighttime, uh, WSB, uh, AM 750. You could hear the Hawks uh, games on the radio. And the broadcaster would, 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 would so give us a vivid picture of what was going on in the court. He painted a vivid picture so I could, you can literally almost see the game. If you ever watched the game before, you knew the court was red and where the logo was and where the lane was and all those things. He would describe all those things, trying to give you a word picture of what was going on. And a parable is like a word picture, amen? Jesus is trying to give us understanding so we can see the kingdom. Amen. He wants you and I to see the kingdom. But the first, there's something you must do to, you know, to see the kingdom. John chapter 3, verse 1 says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher. Come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with you. All right. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I want us to be able to see the kingdom of God today. And Jesus wants you and I to be able to see the kingdom. When you see the kingdom, you get that picture of how things are going to go, amen? You get that visual, visualization to be able to say, if they can fit in the kingdom, I too can fit into the kingdom, amen? And so much in life is about vision, amen? If you can see somebody else doing it, you can see yourself doing it, Amen? And as the people of God, we, people want to see us living right. Amen, somebody. And then they can say, well, if they can live right, <laughs> then I too can live right. Amen. So Jesus wants us to see the kingdom. He wants to give a pic he wanted to give us a picture of what the kingdom of God was like. So he used these parables to lift up the meaning so we can understand the kingdom of God. Jesus wants us to understand. The second thing in this text today I want us to see is that Jesus wants us to grow in the kingdom. Look at Mark chapter 4, verse 31, and it says, It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground, is smaller than all the seeds on earth. But when it is sown, it grows. Somebody say it grows. It grows up and becomes greater than all other herbs. And shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. I want you to see today that God wants us to understand. He wants us to grow in the kingdom. You know, the text says that it's like the seed, the mustard seed, is the smallest of all the seeds. 
But yet when it is planted, so you got to get into the kingdom and stay. Amen, somebody. There are a lot of people who want to come in and out whenever they want to. But I want them to grow and stay. Some people get satisfied with just breaking through the ground, but the text says it will grow up to, a, to be a large tree so that birds can come and make their nest under its shade. I want us to see today that God wants us to grow in the kingdom. What we find in the church life and in the kingdom is that some people, so many people get saved and that's it. They don't want to grow in the kingdom. They don't want to do anything else in the kingdom. They're satisfied with just being saved. But I want you to know that you need to use your gifts and your talents in the kingdom of God so that the, the body of Christ can grow, so that many women, boys, and girls can be blessed. God didn't plant that mustard seed so it can be a mustard seed by itself. But it was to, over, to grow so that birds could come and make nests and people could come and stand in the shade and be blessed. I want to see that God wants us to grow in his kingdom so that we can provide shade and provide shelter and provide nourishment, a place where people can be blessed. Amen. Jesus wants us to grow in the kingdom. 1 Peter 2, verse 2 says, As newborn babes desire the milk of the word, so that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted, the Lord is, is gracious. Have you tasted that the Lord is gracious? Yes, he is. Has God been good to you? Yes, he has. Have you seen him make a difference in your life? Yes. Yes. And you want to want to grow in the kingdom. See God do more and more things in your life and in mine. Jesus wants us to grow in the kingdom. The third thing, the last thing in this text this morning is Jesus wants us to understand the kingdom. The text says in Mark chapter 4, verse 33, so, and with many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. But without a parable, he did not speak to them. And when they were alone, he explained all things to his disciples. So in other words, Jesus wants us to grow and understand the power and the purpose and the provisions of the kingdom. All right. Jesus wants us to understand as he, it says that with many such parables. In other words, over and over and over again, Jesus wanted them to understand life in the kingdom of God. And 